Hello everybody, welcome back to your Razor Academy video for week 11 now for the Learn Dota series. I am your host for this, Toby Wan Kenobi, where we go through the basics of Dota to try and make it so, well, you understand the world of Dota as well as I do. Uh, as I said, basic level. As people found out during my last video, we have ourselves a little bit of fun, sometimes an unexpected gank, uh, or something along those lines. Uh, we, did, we do have fun, we do have fun, that's what it's all about. Um, when it comes to Dota, for me at least, when it comes to Dota for some other people, they are serious business people. Uh, and those people, they might pull something away from these kind of things. Uh, but yeah, this is basics for the beginners out there who want to try and find their way into the world of Dota. And for all those people out there who are asking questions as well, if you have your questions, ask in the comment section below, either be it on the YouTube channel of Cult of Razor or over on the Razor Academy website where you can also post up comments if you have uh, registered yourself a Razor account. Uh, you can post up the comments there. So we'll answer questions from both of those areas. Uh, we can jump ourselves into a couple of those questions as we always do, always do at the start of these things, unless it's like one of those pre-made videos like I did for you uh, for the last week where I was made just before I went to DreamHack, uh, so you had something while I was gone. Um, I apologize, we didn't get another video up a little bit sooner. Uh, I actually lost my voice, Commentator losing his voice, would you believe it? Yeah, but in the meantime, let's use its voice for doing what we're supposed to be doing, and that is question time. Uh, so one of the questions coming out from uh, Twin Tower 415 from the YouTube channel, um, he asked me, how do you get the grid view? Um, for your cards, when, when you want to look at the portraits, what hero you want to select. So your hero select screen, when you come into the world of Dota 2, it's actually very, very simple to do. Uh, all you got to do is hit your control button. If you hit your control button, I know a couple of people answered in the YouTube, uh, YouTube questions as well. But for those people out there who also have that question, didn't read the comments, uh, all you got to do is hit your control button. And that's actually what I use whenever I search my heroes, doing the whole little scroll thing through the heroes. For me, it's just too much effort. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't worry about that. I just hit control, and then it divvies up into your strength, your agi, and your intelligence heroes, and you can select from there. Very, very simple and easy to do. Um, a question coming out from Kind Luong uh, 01 uh, He asked me, Toby, why don't you cast in the studio anymore? Uh, for those guys who don't know, uh, I'm actually still in the studio. Nothing much has changed. The desk is still the same. I got one of these wonderful new razor blades which sit on, sit on my side. Um, and sitting behind me is actually the razor competition. Now, the uh, razor was very, very nice uh, to be one of the uh, co-sponsors for the defense. If you haven't checked that, you can do so. Uh, so yeah, the razor boys really backing the competitive world of Dota 2 through uh, Join Dota. So thanks to those guys. Love your work. Uh, and that's the reason why we give these back to the Razor community as well. It's lovely. But this is the studio. We just changed the background. I got a secondary one as well, a neutral one, which we can use, and it just covers up the back wall. So, yeah, still in the studio. I'm still in the studio. Nothing has changed. Uh, what do we got right now? Um, Raziel wants to talk about last hitting and farming. Now, this is something which we will go into detail with. Uh, actually... Let, actually, no, let's do that in a moment. Let's do that in a moment. That's another question which I can answer without us jumping into the game already. Uh, so we don't have to go in there just yet. Uh, Rickerosauce wants to ask, can you discuss, uh, discuss a push strategy? Um, I've learned a lot of strategies within my time at Dota 2, but I've never been quite able to get a grasp on a strategy based around pushing. I'd really appreciate if you could give some basic tips and tactics for a good push strategy. Now, I know I did a Razor Academy video on push strats and what you as a person can do to try and get your own push strat to work 100%. Uh, and it started to like tail off into what hero works for a different push strat, what timing was all about it. And it starts to get complicated after a while because of the amount of the, like the infinite combinations you can use from all the heroes in the world of Dota 2. So the easiest thing we can say, if we want to drop it down to the raw, raw basics, look at your heroes, look when they hit the strengths, look when you can bring down towers, and look at what you need to counter the opposition. If you do that, your push strats will work. The combination which you will find, you have to find yourself. You're going to find heroes which you, yourself, and your players in your team are able to function with before you go and select them. You don't want to just select a hero because you know it's good. Uh, select a hero that you're, you can actually play properly, and then you can start looking at hero lane, like hero pushing combinations. Uh, check out that old video I did as well from the Razor Academy. There's a whole bunch of them. In fact, there's 10 other ones before it, uh, which you can check out, um, as I love how my game is being automatically resumed, even though I am the person who's controlling it. Um, yes, but uh, you can check out my old videos and see, I think it's week eight. I think it's week eight that we, that we uh, looked at the pushing. Uh, look before the Invoker video. Actually, no, it's just after, it was week, week eight, nine, 
10, yeah, all that kind of jazz. They all start to blend together, but you can check them all out, and you'll, you'll find it there. It's, it's labeled as description, and it will tell you about, we are talking about pushing strats. Uh, today, I want to look at a team fight hero, as well as a counter pusher hero. That is right. I'm wondering if any of you can work out who it is already. Be like sitting there going, oh, I know it's this person. Uh, congratulations to those people. Uh, we're going to do one of those guys. It's the reason why um, the last hitting and farming, uh, we could talk about now as we're going to jump ourselves inside the game. Um, there is another guy who's also uh, came at. Hopefully, I will come back to your question at the end of this. Uh, talking about how to micro units. He's talking about Chen, Meepo, who isn't in the world of Dota 2 just yet. Necro units. Um, uh, things like that. So uh, yeah, we will we will look into that. And I also realize he asked for how to how to micro a Bane Elemental. Uh, hmm. The only thing is like that simple sync, uh, single target thing. But yeah, Bane Elemental, not that hard to mi micro. Enchantress, Chen, uh, even Enigma when you're going inside the jungle. Um, that's the kind of lines you want to look at when you want to try micro. But let's jump ourselves inside the game of Dota 2 because everyone loves looking at the game of Dota 2. Uh, and the hero which I was talking about is Skeleton King. It's not. It's the other SK. Troll is Sand King. Sand King is my hero. So um, I have given him a large amount of levels to play around with. Uh, so let's just level all this kind of... Actually, no, let's wait. We'll go into our lanes. Um, as far as starting builds go with this guy, uh, there's many, many different options you can do when you look at an SK. You want to look at your lane. You want to look at what's really going to work well for him. Um, if he's going to be playing support or if he's going to be playing farm. Like we saw earlier today. Let me just pause this again so I can keep talking. Um... We saw earlier today where Black was playing as a Sand King. He went the bottom lane as a hard farmer. So this gave him a little levels and also worked out well for him because he was going up against a bounty hunter. Now, the reason why SK is so great against melee heroes and also why he's a great counter pusher is his third ability, and that is Caustic Finale. Caustic Finale, he actually got a bit of a buff. Originally, Caustic Finale was when you got the last hit, and then there was like maybe 0.1 second, I think, was the uh, exp expiration time on the effect of Caustic Finale, um, where if you right-click a hero and then the, uh, or, or, um, or unit, and that unit dies, by the way, this does work on Illusions as well. We tested that very early on in the World of Dota 2. Um, if you right-click on that, it will pop and give a blast damage out. So as you see at level 4, Caustic Finale, 220 damage blast comes out from somebody going down. Now, this is magical damage, so it can be resisted to an extent. It's not that wonderful pure damage you get out from Shadow Demon Soul Catcher. It's not like that. Um, but it lets you push back Crete Waves really, 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 really fast. So you level on that Caustic Finale, and you're able to disintegrate your own Crete Wave that's pushing against you. Um, does have a counter, of course, because your Crete Wave will push out a little bit further than what you probably would have banked on. Uh, and uh, then, hang on, am I not... Yeah, sorry, just had to double-check that. Um, <laughs> I'm like, hang on, why am I getting messages from five million other people? No, that's just normal. Uh, but yeah, it can, it can push out your wave too much, and then you lose control of it. So it's only a good thing to try and do for harassment on heroes. So you always want to, like, sometimes put one level on it very early on, and then you can level up your Burrow Strike. And that's where we look into our next part of it. If you look at a support SK, now support SK will want to level this up as fast as possible. Burrow Strike, the main reason why you want to level this up is not just because of the increase in damage. The increase in damage of 60 points every single level, it's good. But your range is the important thing. You go up by 100 range with every single level you go up. Stun duration is standard. It's the reason why SK is actually a good initiating hero in the early game. And you can combine him with heroes like the like uh, uh, Lashrak, because then you've got the 2.7 stun, gives more enough time for Lashrak to cast his stun, or Shadow Demon who does his stun, then you follow through with your stun, and it's a lot of time where you can hold a hero in place and deal this really, really good, good damage. So he works as a support hero in that regard, and then he becomes a slippery little sucker, because you burrow a strike in, and you think, okay, well, I've moved from one position, and then I go to right next to an enemy hero, in fact, right on top of an enemy hero, how the hell do I get out of this? And that is where your Sandstorm comes into play. So let's play around with this guy a little bit. Um, the starting items, we've got 603 gold. And I will go the standard kind of thing. And you can only see it there in the um, suggested items. Now, you could do this if you want to. I love SKs, which are aggressive. So it's an Urn of Shadows. That's what we kind of want to play with. So one Sage's Mask, two Gauntlets, and then the recipe. But you go the double Gauntlet early on. Um, 
Obviously, he's a little bit higher in levels because I power leveled him up using the cheats. Uh, and then you can go with your other items. Now, normally I prefer to go up with one Tango, one Salve, and then double Clarity. Now, the main reason why I like doing this as an SK is because you got the burst, da you got the burst damage heal. So if you get yourself in a lot of trouble, you got the Salve and you can jump straight back in there. But it allows you to be so much more aggressive. Most of the time, you don't have this much mana pool. It does require you to have... Okay, what lanes have we even got? Windrunner, middle, uh, top, um, Storm is... Okay. And then all the farmers on bot lane. Fantastic. Let me go in towards the middle lane. <laughs> no, I can't go there. I should head top. In fact, I don't even fit into any of these lanes as an SK, so that doesn't really work. Um, but this, this kind of build is great when you're a support hero. Uh, mainly because you still have that small amount of uh, mana regen you're going to get from the Sage's Mask. And you can pick that pretty... Uh, pretty uh, you can pick it up pretty early on from just here in the side shop. So you pick it up from him, and then, you know what, you've got a small amount of regen, maybe fly out a couple of clarities here and there, but it allows you to get your boots up, and it's all about the kills, because it gives you your earn charges. So let's look at this. So this is our, this is our level 1, our level one Burrow Strike range. Now, I want to initiate a little bit more, but that's all I've really got right now. So what I want to do is try and come up, Juggernaut, I don't know if I can actually tell him to go on somebody right now, because I'd love to go on this Crystal Maiden. I don't know why we have a double support. Okay, we go with this one. And i got a dual lineup right now. So we borrow straight through the two of them. He spins, and it is pretty much easy, easy pickings, as long as Juggernaut can finish the job. But that's our first blood, and that's a level one borrow strike initiation. I kind of made that a little bit easy because I'm level 25 right now, so I deal a crap load of damage just from my base hit. But if we want to look at it in a different way, and this is going to be where we have a little bit of fun because we're going to turn WTF mode on. So welcome to WTF mode where you can, you can uh, pop as many abilities as you want to. And we can just play around with this a little bit more. It's a bot game, so who really cares? So this is going to be your combination you want to use. So as an SK, you want to initiate him. So you Burrow Strike in, and then you can go into your Sandstorm if you just want to be a nuisance. If you want to be aggressive, you can jump in in this manner. And as you can see, level 1 Sandstorm is not too bad. Um, the cool, the cooldown time is actually longer. You notice there's a cooldown of 40 seconds, and the duration is only 20 seconds. But once you go up to level two on this sandstorm, you can forever stay in this. Hang on, well, I just did that, so but it doesn't matter. Um, you can forever stay in the sandstorm. So 80 seconds duration on sandstorm with a really decent amount of damage. This is the kind of build you go when you are being insanely defensive on a lane. It used to be the old classic build that you would find from Sand Kings, where they would find themselves um, looking down the lines, maybe getting like double Sage's Mask and thinking about a Silence Stick. This is really, really old school, by the way. Uh, but this will let you stand in the lane for a very, very long time. And unless somebody had a stun that will pull you out, then nothing would really contend against you. So in this case, you look at the lineup from, um, from the Dire side, and there's only two heroes that can pull me out of my Sandstorm. One is Earthshaker, and the other is Tiny. And the reason why these guys can do it is if I go inside a sandstorm, I'm in Viz. So then you look over towards Earthshaker, and it's like, well, he can throw that fissure, and he knows exactly where I'm going to be, because it is the center of the sandstorm. So damn easy to find me. So that is the, that is the whole thing of, well, okay, I know where to stun him. I can bring him back out of that one. But this is where Sandstorm is still worth leveling up. So if you're like, well, what's the point? There's no point in me leveling up Sandstorm. This is where Sandstorm actually does work for you. You jump in Viz, but there's an invisibility delay when you come out. So level four, notice I start walking and I'm still in Viz. So 1.5 seconds I have to be in Viz and just walk away. Now, this is really great if you pop it off very, very quickly and you want to try and juke somebody. So you got somebody coming in, they want to attack you, and you're like, well, awesome. I just go Sandstorm and then walk away. And my invis, in that small time, he won't know which direction I go. And he might walk in one random direction and not help him out. So let's have a little bit of crack here. Go inside the sandstorm. They won't initiate because they're completely scared of me because I'm level 25. They're bots. And they're like, I don't know, what, I don't know how to deal with this. Um, let's, get, let's get ourselves a little bit of money. So I want, to, uh, I want to have a little bit of fun with a little bit of range. And this is where we're going to go into, let me go, gold, gold, gold. Yeah, give me that much. Um, all I want is Blink Dagger. That's all I really need. Blink the sand. Okay, so we, we've now got Blink Dagger up on our SK. Now, the reason why this is kind of nuts is because you're able to basically just uh, jump yourself anywhere on the map. Welcome to WF, WTF mode. Now, we can look at the range. Blink Dagger, great item. Will cost you about 21, what was it, 2150? 
It's one of your uh, normal, yeah, 2150. Your, your core items. So you got treads, you got magic wand, and you got blink dagger. Personally, I like throwing the urn into there because you want to have an aggressive SK. You want to have these urn charges where you can track people down. All right, so let's look at this as, as far as a range thing. Now, I was talking before about how far can you go with the Burrow Strike. Now, Burrow Strike is level one right now, so that is our range. Let's go up to level four. So this is our level four range. Really, really nice range. But the problem is sometimes that is not enough. I want to go from there. That's really not enough for me. I can't catch up. I can't initiate in someone. We've got Nerd Shaker all the way down here on the bottom lane. So I want to get in really, really close. But I don't want to walk in there because by the time I get in there, he's just going to blink himself away or uh, walk himself away, throw down a fissure and make my life hell. So what do we do? We go blink and we go burrow. And that gives you your range you want. And he just tries to do that to me, which doesn't really work. Um, yeah, so this is where Blink Dagger is a key item for the, for the SK. It's the second reason why you have the Blink Dagger as a key item for the SK is because you'll notice right now, if I want to try and come in, let me find someone who's going to stun me. So let's just jump ourselves up here. Whoops. He instantly stuns me. No, Bane, don't go on him. Damn it to hell. <laughs> okay, let's, let's head up towards our top lane. No, no, I, I want to blink to here. Just let me blink up. There we go. Okay. And instantly my uh, teammates initiate. Great. Fantastic. I hope they die right now. Uh, but let's, let's do this with the, with the VS. The VS is going to be walking back to base. I need one level in my epicenter. Now, my epicenter, my ultimate. I want to chain it off on him. And if I pop this, he should stun me. Hang on, let me just get rid of that. No, he's not going to stun me. Fantastic. Let's try someone else then. We'll go back down to our Earthshaker. So we can look at Earthshaker, and he should be stunning me right now. So I'll blink in and pop ultimate. So the only option he really has is to throw out that fissure, which he doesn't do for some unknown reason. He throws it at the end. Uh, looks like the bots are taking a little bit longer to respond right now. Um, but yeah, bots are not going to help me do this example. But if I'm going to pop off my epicenter, that's a long channel time. So you're already looking there. Two seconds I got, I got to channel that, and that's mean two seconds that people have to try and kill me before I'm able to go off. So if I want to jump myself in and go, well, awesome, I'm going to burrow strike myself in now and then pop into my epicenter. I got all this time, even the creep wave was there attacking me. So they're like, well, okay, what am I supposed to do against that? I can't, I can't just jump myself in there in epicenter because if I get stunned up, then my epicenter does go on cooldown. It's not like Prophet's teleportation not Sprout, for those guys who watched the week last, uh, last week, you'll understand what I'm making fun about myself about. Um, yeah, but you want to cast your epi before you go in because you're going to get stunned and your epi will go on cooldown. Not the world you want to play in. So what you do is you do your epi center and then you blink and then you burrow. So this gives you your range. Early on, yes. most of the time, you have to cast your epi center and then just burrow and walk in as close as you can. But even that small range from here to here is still worth it. Because that means you get yourself into a position for your epicenter. Your epicenter won't do the damage unless you're around it. But that's when it comes to big team fight place. Well, I want to try and do this and see if he'll stun me this time. No, he won't. I think he must have used his stuns on that middle lane before. Um... <laughs> And there goes the CM. Okay, this should be possible. Just for those guys out there that enjoy to watch me die, let's try this. So we go into Epicenter, and no one's got a stun. Are you freaking kidding me that no one is using a stun? Okay, I guess not. Gotta love that too, Blind Butt Row. Just for those guys out there who just thought, you know what, Toby was a noob last week. And level 25 lets me beat this good. Um, it's the only way. Uh, but yeah, but you look at SK. Now, I did two things just then. You might have noticed two things just then. When I click my burrow strike, you can target an individual hero. So we'll just jump in here towards the middle lane, and I want to go on this ES. So I target him. But what if I can't see the ES? Now, he goes inside, he goes inside a fog of war, and not 100% sure where he is, as uh, I'm getting attacked by a tower. But imagine if someone is sitting right here, and I'm like, I know where he is, but I still want a burrow strike. You can target directly, or target in the line. You don't need to target a singular person. And because of this, it's what's called a blind burrow. 
So you're not quite sure what you're going to hit, but you're pretty sure someone's there. But because you don't have the vision, you still want to burrow, and you don't want to have it as a target on a person, then you're able to do something like that. So it's a nice little cool thing you can do as the SK. We also haven't shown you one little fun thing on the SK. Let me just uh, fully level myself up. And uh, we're going to use Caustic Finale. So now I want to look at this creep here. Now I want to take this creep and I want him to explode. And that's what happens. Level 4 Caustic Finale. A lot of damage. But what happens when I want to do a full creep wave? Now I was mentioning the cooldown time on the Caustic Finale, where I want to attack the entire creep wave. Now Burrow Strike has this effect. It will carry your Caustic Finale over. So I want to take out this mid lane. So I Burrow Strike in and use my Caustic Finale. And the entire creep wave disintegrates. Now this is the reason why SK is one of the best counter pushers in the game. Because if you have yourself a huge creep wave lining up, you can do a solo. So you Burrow Strike through and right click. And that Caustic Finale will be transferred to every single creep around it. And that is your burst damage of 220 for every creep that is there. So because of that, you can take down very, very, very big creep waves in the blink of an eye. Great up against the Broodmother. That's why SK is a, um, a nice little uh, picker up when you want to look at a Broodmother. Because Broodmother, the Spiderlings have the same kind of damage when they pop with the Caustic Finale. So if you get a whole bunch of Spiderlings caught out, then you pop the Caustic, uh, you just right click a hero, uh, right click a Spiderling, it pops, everything else will just start to pop after that point. So it's a really great counter pushing thing. But most of the time, SK is picked for, well, one, that initiation stun, but two, it's the, uh, it's the epicenter. The epicenter is what people like. Let's get ourselves one other item which is always used on an SK. So we bring him back to base, and let's just sell up our, uh, our users item. We never needed consumables. So we want to use the, the combination of Blink to BKB. Now, BKB is their situational item. Generally, most situations would call for a BKB. Now, this is the reason why you call for a BKB. So let's jump ourselves down towards the bottom lane. Now, I was talking about charging your epicenter off to the side out here. Now, the bad side about this is, by the time you get the epi off and you start to go, already one pulse was done on the side. So your ulti is not as effective as you would really want it to be. So what you try and do is, you go blink, burrow into BKB, and then your epicenter. Normally, you're not this far away, and you're able to catch up, and you just disintegrate them. Um, but you don't get interrupted in BKB. BKB stands shortly for Black King Bar. Now, the duration, the, the more times you use it, the shorter the duration is, but your casting time is two seconds on an epicenter, so who gives a crap? Um, the lowest timing on your BKB is five seconds, so if you get your timing right, then you're good. So all it is, is just the blink, BKB, ulti. Such an easy combination. If you want to chase them, welcome to Blink Dagger or Burrow Strike, whatever you want to use. Most of the time, you try and get yourself into a position with the Blink Dagger, because once you get attacked, the Blink Dagger goes on cooldown. But this is, this is your answer to if you cannot, get your B, you cannot get your epicenter off. That is what this is all about. So that's how you run it. Uh, and I believe that's actually, yeah, we've got to get ourselves into our last, uh, our last portion of this one. That is basically the summary of SK. I kind of want to get this again. And just easy, easy combo. Get your hotkeys right, and off you go. And uh, goodbye right now to the, uh, <laughs> to the tiny here. We can just keep popping up in the air that way. And the Crystal Maiden, sup. Great fun times you can always have when you're in WTF mode. Weird when you're trying to play with a whole bunch of friends. Uh, but yeah, so that is Sand King. Now, this is going to be something which we're going to talk about, which is the last hitting question. So, uh, can you talk about creeps, last hitting, and farming? Now, this is a question from Raziel. This came out from the Razor Academy page. Uh, so, big thanks for actually using that as well. Now, Farming and creep wave. When it comes to farming, the one thing I'm going to say is look at who you want to put your farm on. A lot of teams will start uh, recruiting players in and they'll say spots one to five. So you are player one, you are player two, you are player three. Now this doesn't just assign to a role. You're not like player one is your hard carry. Player two is supposed to be your ganker. Player three is your support person. Player four is your jungle person. That's not the way it works. What it works is, player one takes the most farm. He is the most important person to get levels, farm up, 
gold, experience, everything you put onto that one person. And then you go down descending order of importance. So number five will be your raw support hero. So it'd be your VS, it'd be your Venomancer. Number one, in this case, would actually be your hard carry, the person you want to get the most amount of farm on top of. So when it comes down to farm, and this is where a lot of rage is caused during, um, during uh, play, and I'm talking about public games, because people basically go, oh my god, why do you take my last hit? And uh, really, sometimes, you've got to just ask yourself the question, why am I taking this last hit? When I take a last hit, jump ourselves up here. When I take a last hit, I just got 45 gold there. And that's 45 gold that I take. It's not taken by the person who's in the lane with me. It's not shared. The experience is shared. But the gold goes to me. What am I going to do with that 45 gold that I just got? And when I take the entire creep wave, what do I do with all of this gold, which is all just continuously stacked up on top of each other? Who does what with that gold? Hard carry, does it make perseverance? How's it work with that one? So when it comes to farming, you've got to look at this, just this level scale of who should really have the cash? Who should be getting the moolah? As far as last hitting goes, I want a creep wave, which is right next to nothing. So damn easy to do when you have an SK um, for last hitting, as we just showed in the last game. When it comes to last hitting, a lot of it comes down to your own control. Now, I was brought up with a little bit of War I was brought up with Warcraft 3. So I'm used to, if I just stop my hero here, he will auto-attack. And that is default for me. That is what I'm normally used to. But most players um, who come to the World of Dota 2 can turn this function off. So if you want to turn off auto-hitting, it is inside your settings menu, and you can find it in there. And uh, that is one thing you can do. But last thing is just this thing where you got to look at your damage. How much damage do you deal? How much life points does the creep have? And when can I attack him to get that last swipe in? When do I look to deny my own creeps as well? It's getting down low. How much damage can I do? Enough to kill him off. So this is this whole thing of you got to work out your base damage and then what would happen with... Uh, if you attack that creep, would you get the last hit in there? Or with the damage these creeps deal, which is 23, would that be enough? I love how Zeus now comes down towards the bottom lane. I'm going to be an absolute twit to him and come down here and join him. Because um, I want a creep where it's going to push back past the tower. Maybe, actually, mid might do that. Oh, no, get out of that. Mid might do that in the moment, because I, I kind of want this lane. When you push back past the tower, now this is when last hitting gets a little bit more complicated for people. You look at this tower, and it does 110 damage. Now, I deal more damage than it because I am a higher level. I, I'm a huge level up as opposed to where I'm supposed to be at this point. Hey, here we go, finally. Now they leave that bottom lane. Now, leave me alone. Um, I'm going to deny my own creep wave uh, a little bit faster than normal so uh, we can push this lane back. Now, I'm looking at one creep which is down at maybe one third of its life, one at one half of its life. So when it comes in range of this tower, the tower starts attacking. And you see, just there, if I had very little damage, I would have a hard time getting those last hits in. And because of that, farming becomes difficult. Now, there's two different ways you can look at this one. This is uh, tower hugging. It's when you hang around your tower and you wait for the creep wave to come into you. This is harder to farm, but it's easier to get experience. So it becomes a trade-off when you look for your experience game when you come in range of the tier 1 tower and what you can get for your farm because it becomes harder to farm because of the tower and screwing up with your last hitting. Right. For a lot of League of Legends people, this will take a while to get used to. Because I know League of Legends, last hitting, you do it for your, for your normal creeps, but most of the time you'll never push your way f too far unless you want to assault a tower. Where in Dota, it kind of functions in two ways. There's a bit of yin and yang, push and pull. Now, if I want to push out this lane, then I would destroy the creep way pretty fast. Ah, oh, really? What the hell is happening to that tower? Are they thinking about t being bot? I think they are, but I'm still here. Um, but in this way, I can, hold my, I can hold my lane back. Now, this is called lane control. I kill off my creeps earlier than expected. So faster than the opposition creeps can kill them off. And because of that, now the creep wave will push down to the river. This is a safer place for me to be. Easy to farm up, and then I can push again. Caustic finale, this is that problem which I was talking about before where you just push too far. It just destroys the creep wave so damn fast. I can pop this entire creep wave with basically two, two clicks. Um, I took four just then. Uh, but you can do it with two clicks if you don't screw up just like I just did then. Yeah, there's that TP again. They're thinking about defending the tower. That's not going to work. Um, but yeah, so that is, that is basically SK. Um, the last one is going to be microing. 
Last one is microwing units. So in this case, I'm going to use a very, very simple, uh, simple exp um, thing for this one. And it's called Necromicon. So we have level 3 Necro book. Buy a whole bunch of them, but it doesn't work. Um, so Necro books, and we can create a whole bunch of these guys. In fact, welcome to WTF moment. As you can see, it doesn't work in the end because you can only get two units out of this one. So the other Necro units die the second you create new ones. Um, but WTF mode lets me extend it out. So, microing and how to control this. Now, this can work in, well, many different ways in how you want to do it. If you're like an old StarCraft Brood War player, then you'd be like, I don't need no group. I can control every single one of these guys manually, saying you will go there, you will go there, you will go there, and the, your APM will go through the roof of this one. In Dota 2, just like Warcraft 3, you've got control groups. So if you want to, these guys, Control group one. So all you got to do is just select them. Hang on, let me just recreate them because they're about to die. Um, but you can select them and say, you are control group one. So you just hit control and one. So every time I click on SK, I want to get back to these guys. I hit my one button and it jumps me straight back to them. Then SK, he can be control group two. So because of this, I go one, two, one, two, one, two. Very, very simple to jump between them. But what if I want to take it one step further? This is group one. Fantastic. I want to be out of control. My, necro ne uh, my, my Necromicon Warrior uh, separately. So let's create a new set. You are number three. You are number two. You are number one. This is so crucial when you play a hero like Meepo. Because Meepo has all these abilities. Like Mana Burn, it's only on this Necro Archer. And then the Necro Warrior. Walking around with a Mana Break, the Last Will, the True Sight. So micro human positioning is really, really important. But you want to get that mana burn off and these guys in the right position. And then you've got to micro yourself as well and all your abilities. So basically what you've gone from is controlling one hero into controlling three heroes. Now this gets complicated when you play a hero like Chen and you add a necro book to it. Or you take a Meepo and you add a necro book to it. The reason why Meepo was a hero which I think uh, uh, Kmart uh, or Kmat uh, said that, like he would like to be Talk, like talked about because Meepo is one of these heroes that is able to split himself into multiple parts and then jump to his himself his, old, his other parts using a ability called Puff. Uh, we will probably go into Meepo in a lot more detail later on and the reason why he is such a hard hero to play properly unless you are really 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 good at micro because you will be controlling a Meepo on the top lane controlling a Meepo in the middle lane and controlling one on the bottom line. You get experience from all three Meepos. Uh, but if you want to initiate on one, what you want to do is get them all into one spot at the one time. And the only way you could do that is not by clicking on the map and selecting one, selecting middle lane one, then selecting bottom lane one and doing it that way. It's too much time to move around. So what you do is, it's a thing called micro. Use your control groups and try and bring them in that way. So you go, your necro books, well done to uh, Tani, who is destroying my team. Um, so we go level two, uh, control two, control three, and you are, whoops, and you're control one. So I want to go you here, you here, you here. Damn it, control one, thank you. But all of this can be done. So you can control all of your units just by doing this little combination. And this means you can basically control the map very, very easily. Uh, or control your units across the map very, very simply just by using control groups. This is where micro comes into it all, and that's when it comes down to those pro players. Like Puppy is possibly the best example. If you ever get a chance when you watch Na'Vi, keep a very, very close eye on what Puppy does when it comes to team fights, because he plays heroes like Enchantress, like, en uh, like Chen, and these are very micro-intensive heroes, to the point where Puppy is able to, and let me just find a hero I can do this to. In fact, let me just uh, do it to this Crystal Maiden, who I think is just running out through the middle lane. All right, so Crystal Maiden is here, and he wants to run out. So now, get in front of him. Get in front of him. So you kind of want to block him off. And I can keep doing this all day. So block him off. He's actually walking through me. Has he got face boots? He's got face boots. No wonder he was getting through me. Um... But if you find a hero, oh, it's tiny. He's got face boost. No, he doesn't. So he wants to walk up this way, and you can body block. And you can do this with a normal creep. So you find a creep, and you're able to do this. This is where micro comes in, because you're microing your own hero out of this one while you're trying to also micro 
to hold uh, to hold this one hero in place and just to slow him down so your teammates can get there in time and just stop him from being exactly where he wants to be. So. I just selected him halfway through that too. All right, so uh, that, is, that is what you got to do when you try micro units. I think that's going to wrap us up for today. Uh, for those guys too who have been watching today and have actually have some questions you wish to have asked, please do so in the comment section below. As always, I welcome any kind of questions which you want to ask. I will try and answer as many of them in the best detail as possible as we go through hero after hero and look at um, different heroes here and there uh, to see where their strengths lie, where their strengths don't. So thanks for tuning in today, guys, and uh, I will see you all on the next Learn Dota. Hopefully you've enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time.